I'm Laura Fluke. I am a 2024 graduate of the Donald L. Morton Complex General and Surgical Oncology Fellowship here at St. John's Cancer Institute. I am a Navy surgeon. Of the almost 200 surgeons in the Navy, I will be among a handful of surgical oncology trained surgeons for the Navy. I trained at Naval Medical Center Portsmouth in Virginia. I graduated in 2018. I then was a general surgeon in the Navy for two years in Yokosuka, Japan. Japan was a great place to live. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I enjoyed being a general surgeon there. I then returned to Naval Medical Center Portsmouth. Some of my mentors there were the ones that had initially encouraged me to apply to be a surgical oncologist. That process in the military is a little more complex, I think, than um, people from the outside looking in can tell. So we have to apply to the Navy to kind of request to be a surgical oncologist. Since there, there are only a handful and they, the Navy usually wants us at the big three training facilities. So that's uh, Bethesda, so Walter Reed in Bethesda, Maryland, Naval Medical Center Portsmouth in Portsmouth, Virginia, and at Balboa in San Diego. So I applied and I was one of the uh, applicants selected to be able to then apply to, to civilian programs for fellowship for training. So uh, when I was going through the application process, I chose St. John's Cancer Institute, the Donald L. Morton Fellowship, because some programs out there subspecialize their surgical oncologists. And I think, you know, for some people, that's, that's definitely what they want. But the Navy would like me to be a general surgical oncologist. So this is one of those programs that, you know, I definitely took a hard look at. And the program is military friendly. There are two Army fellows in the year ahead of me. So they'll, they'll graduate this coming year. And I know that the program has had Navy fellows in the past. So I think that we have a really good working relationship there. So Julia Green and Jess Weiss are the two fellows in the class above me, and they'll be returning to the Army to complete their careers after graduating from here. In our first year, we uh, have essentially blocks of three-month rotations. So my fellowship started with three months working on the melanoma and cutaneous cancer service with Dr. Esner. He is well known just around the world. His, he has patients that come from everywhere. So during my time with him, I was just blown away. Just learning the way that, that he does things was really helpful for me and I feel that I'll be able to take that back to treat my patients in the Navy. Melanoma is something that we see a lot in the Navy because our patients spend so much time outside, working outside on, on the decks of ships, right? I found that particularly valuable as something that I'll be able to return to the Navy. While we're on these rotations, we um, choose specific patients and find all of the more recent literature and research on them. So every Friday we have a case conference and different fellows, there are four fellows each year uh, in, within each year group. And so among the four fellows, um, two of us every Friday present cases. So, and that's educational for both the fellows, right? So that I can teach my peers about this interesting case that I got to see. Um, and they, they do the same for me, right? Except it's in a forum with surgical oncologists and medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, the pathologists usually show slides. It's something that I have realized is a real asset to this program in particular. That was my first three months, and this three months I am on the hepatobiliary service working with Dr. Anton Bilchek. He specifically works with liver and pancreas, but I mean, this, is, this guy is a general surgical oncologist also. He does some breast, some skin, colon. I mean, the service is a knockout. We've been doing all kinds of stuff uh, on service with him. He's, it's very busy. So these few months are, you know, I'm like in the trenches, if you will. But the patients are also really grateful, really sick. So 
the, the hours are long and this will be the most difficult three months that I have here. But after that, I will go to a month of research, one month on the breast and endocrine service. So working with doctors Grumley and Fancher and Dr. Goldfarb, um, our endocrine surgeon. While I haven't gotten to work with them specifically, uh, I do participate in their tumor boards on Mondays and I'm really looking forward to working with all of them. The last rotation that I'll do that three month block is radiation oncology, which is something in surgical training I've never had very much exposure to. Obviously something that our, a lot of our patients have to participate in. So I am looking forward to kind of seeing some of the behind the scenes work that Dr. Woolman and the radiation oncologists here do. And then my last three month block will be on the mixed tumor service with Drs. Foshag, who is our program director, and Dr. Fisher, who's the assistant program director. Uh, and on that service, anything goes. I'm really looking forward to, to you know, seeing how both of them do things. And again, it'll be that service that shows me kind of everything. You know, I could be doing a breast surgery and then go straight to doing a colon surgery and then doing a stomach surgery and then a skin cancer surgery. While I'm on all of these services, we uh, run tumor boards. So tumor boards are multidisciplinary um, gatherings where we have surgical oncologists, radiation oncologists, medical oncologists, all of these different doctors, and we discuss patients individually. What I have learned here is how to be the leader of that conference. Here, the fellows run those conferences, and that is the, the tool that this facility is giving me to, to take back to the Navy so that I can then go on to lead tumor boards in the military. We spend most of our time outside of this institution. We spend a lot of time down in Long Beach working with Dr. Wolf. He is a hepatobiliary surgeon down there who does robotic um, Whipple procedures and liver surgery. It's in our second year that we get a lot of our minimally invasive procedures. Fellows don't struggle to get the cases that we need to graduate. And it's that second year that you know, we're really given the opportunity to be independent, work with people that are doing some of those more complex procedures. Although, I must give credit, our institution, when I was working with Dr. Esner on service, right, appropriately, my first couple weeks with him, he is, you know, right there next to me the whole time, making sure that I'm doing everything the way he wants it. So that he has the outcomes, right, that he's used to, then he, he gives us independence. And that's what I needed to be able to know that I could leave here and do those procedures on my own. He does a lot of reconstruction and cosmetic surgery after removing cancer that I have not done in my prior training. But I was able to get so much experience with him in the operating room that I am, I am comfortable doing those things on my own and I'll be able to take those with me in practice. So I am hopeful that that is the experience that I have on all of my rotations and in talking with a lot of the second years, I think it will be. We have multiple research conferences each week. I have projects that I'm working on with Dr. Esner and Dr. Bilchik right now. We have multiple research opportunities in breast and endocrine and working with big data banks and Uday Sibia, he's one of the other first years, he does a lot of um, like cost analysis for healthcare. And so there are many research opportunities and I think the frequent conferences that we have kind of help us, you know, keep, keep our nose to the grindstone, if you will. There is an expectation also that we present our research at conferences. As a first year, I already have an abstract that hopefully we'll hear about later this month, whether it's been accepted to a conference to be able to present as well. When I was an applicant looking at programs, the things I wanted to know were, am I going to get the cases? That's a yes, right? Am, am I gonna get all the cases that I want in the right numbers? Yes. What I specifically wanted to know was, would I get enough variety to be a general surgical oncologist? And yeah, absolutely. I, I think so. That is definitely an asset to this program. In the summer of 2021, I was on an aircraft carrier in the Arabian Sea 
and we were supporting the evacuation of Afghanistan. I was the surgeon on the ship, the ship's surgeon. There's one of us on the entire aircraft carrier. The aircraft carrier houses around 6,000 people. As the only surgeon, we're supporting air, air operations, right? So jets can't take off an aircraft carrier without a surgeon on board so that if there was an accident, right, we, we can help those people. When I was on the aircraft carrier, I found out that I had matched here at the Donald L. Morton Fellowship Program. It was actually difficult for me to, to check my email where I knew I would get um, that notification. So uh, I, my husband was actually able to reach out to me to let me know. I had given him my email and password and everything so that he could figure out where I had matched. So it was very exciting um, that while I was deployed on a ship in the middle of the ocean, I was still able to, to know what my future held and being able to come here was what I wanted. I had ranked uh, this fellowship program as my number one choice, so being able to come here has been a wonderful opportunity.